Cat, rat, and dog. <clears throat> Hannah's mind had gone blank with shock. The three of them stood transfixed with horror under the visibility cloak. The very last rays of the setting sun were casting a bloody light over the long shadowed ground. Then behind them, they heard a wild howling. Hagrid, Harry murmured. Without thinking about what he was doing, he made to, he made to turn back. But both Ron and Hermione seized his arm. We can't, said Ron, who was paper white. He'll be in worse trouble if they know we'd been to see him. Hermione's breathing was shallow and uneven. How could they? She choked. How could they? Come on, said Ron. His teeth seemed to be chattering. They all set off back towards the castle, walking slowly to keep themselves hidden under the invisibility cloak. The light was fading fast now. By the time they reached the open ground, the darkness was settled like a spell around them. Scabbers, keep still, Ron hissed, clamping his hand over his chest. The rat was wriggling madly. Ron came to a sudden halt, trying to force Scabbers deeper into his pockets. What's the matter with you, you stupid rat? Stay out! He bit me! Ron, be quiet, Hermione whispered urgently. Fudge will be out here in a minute. He won't stay put, Scabbers plainly terrified. He was writhing with all his might, trying to break free of Ron's grip. What's the matter with him? But Harry had just seen, slinking towards them, a body low to the ground, wide yellow eyes glinting eerily in the darkness. Crookshanks. Whether he could see them or he was following the sound of Scabba's squeaks, Harry couldn't tell. Hmm. Crookshanks, Hermione moaned. No, go, go away, Crookshanks, go away. But the cat was getting near. Scabba's no! Too late, the rat had slipped between Ron's clutches of his fingers, hit the ground, and scampered away to in one bound. Crookshanks sprang after him, and before Harry or Hermione could stop them, Ron had thrown the invisibility cloak off himself and peeled away into the darkness. Ron! Hermione moaned. She and Harry looked at each other and then followed it at a sprint. It was impossible to run full out with the invisibility cloak, so they pulled it off and it streamed behind them like a banner. They hurled it, hurled after Ron. They could hear his feet thundering along ahead of the about, about with shouts at Crookshanks. Get away from him! Get away! Scabbers, come here! Then there was a loud thud. Gotcha! Get off you, me stinking cat! Harry and Hermione almost fell over uh, fell over Ron and skidded to a stop right in front of him. He was sprawled out on the ground, but Scabbers was back in his pocket, and he had both hands tight over this quivering lump. Ron, come on back under the cloak, said Hermione. Dumbledore, the minister, they'll be coming back in a minute! But before they could cover themselves again, before they could cover their breath, they heard the soft pounding of gigantic paws. Something was bounding towards them out in the dark, an enormous, pale-eyed, jet-black dog. Harry reached for his wand, but it was too late. The dog made an enormous leap, and the front paws hit him on the chest. He keeled over backwards in the whirl of hair. He left a hot breath, saw inch-long teeth. But the force of the leap he had carried it too far. He rolled off of him, dazed, feeling as though his ribs were broken. Harry tried to stand up. He couldn't f hear its growling as it skidded around for a new attack. Ron was on his feet, <clears throat> and the dog sprang back towards them, pushed Harry aside, and the dog's jaws fastened instead around Ron's outstretched arm. Harry lunged forward and seized a handful of the brute's hair, but it was dragging Ron away as easily as though it were a, big, a rag doll. Then, out of nowhere, something hit Harry so hard across the face that he was knocked off his feet again. He heard Hermione shriek with pain and fell too. <clears throat> Harry stopped, groped for his worn, blinking blood out of his eyes. Luminous, he whispered. The wan light showed him a tree, a trunk of a thick tree. He had chased Scabbers into the shadow of a whomping willow. 
and the branches were cracking as though they were high wind whomping backward and forward to stop them going near. And there, at the base of the trunk, was the dog dragging Ron backward into the little large gap in the roots. Ron was fighting furiously, but his head was t and torso were slipping out of sight. Ron! Hermione shouted, trying to follow him. But the heavy branch whipped lethally through the air, and he was forced backward again. All they could do now was watch what was now was one of Ron's legs. He had hooked around the root in an effort to stop the dog from pulling him farther underground. But a horrible crack cut the air like a gun shot. Ron's leg had been broken. The moment later, his foot vanished from sight. Harry, we've got to go for help, Hermione gasped. She was bleeding too. The whomping willow had cut her across the shoulder. No! That thing's big enough to eat him. We can't, We haven't got time. We're never going to get through without help. Then another branch whipped down. The twigs clenched their knuckles like knuckles. If that dog can get in, we can. Harry panted, darting in there, here and there, trying to find a way through the vicious swishing branches. But he couldn't get an inch near to the tree roots without being in the range of the tree's blows. Oh, help, help, Hermione whispered, frantically dancing, Certain, it, certainly on the spot. Please. Crookshank started forward. He slithered between the barrier of the branches and it, like a snake and placed his front paws upon the knot on the trunk. Abruptly, as though the tree had been turned into marble, it stopped moving. Not a leaf twitched or shook. Crookshanks! Hermione whispered, uncertain, un whispered uncertainly. She now grasped Harry's arm painfully hard. How did he know? He's friends with that dog, said Harry grimly. I've seen them together. Come on, get, keep, keep your wand out. So they covered the distance of the trunk in, a, in seconds. But before they had reached the gap of the root, Crookshanks had slid into the th flick of the bottle brush tail. Harry went next and crawled in very low in the tunnel. Crookshanks was a little way along, his eyes flashing in the light from Harry's wound. Seconds later, Hermione slithered down beside him. Where's Ron? She whispered in a terrified voice. This way. Harry was setting off, bent and backed in Crookshanks. Where does this tunnel come out? Hermione asked breathlessly behind him. I don't know. It's marked. On the it's, isn't it's marked on the Marauders map, but Fred and George said no one's ever gotten into it. It goes off the edge of the map, but it looks like it ends in Hogsmeade. They now moved as fast as they could, um, bent almost double ahead of them. Crookshanks' tail blood bobbed in and out of the view. On and on it went through the passage. It felt like at least as long as one of Honeyduke's. And Harry could think of Ron was being enormous dog might be doing to him. He was drawing his breath, sharp, painful gasp, running at a crouch. And then the tunnel began to rise. Moments later, he twisted Crookshanks had gone instead. Harry could see a patch of dim light through the small opening. He and Hermione paused, gasping for breath, edging forward. Both raised their bones to see what lay behind beyond. It was a room, a very disordered, dusty room. Paper was peeling from the walls, and there were stains all over the floor. Every place the furniture broken, and then somebody had smashed it. Its windows were all boarded up. Harry glanced at Hermione, who looked very frightened, but nodded. Harry pulled himself out of the hole, staring around. The room was, descent, was deserted, but the door... To the right stood open, leading to the shadowy hallway. Hermione suddenly grabbed Harry's arm again with her wide eyes and traveling around the boarded windows. Harry, she whispered, I think we're in the shrieking shack. Harry looked around and his eyes fell on the wooden chair near the large chunks that had been torn out of it. One leg had been ripped off entirely. Ghosts didn't do that, he said slowly. At a moment... There was a creak overhead. 
Something had moved upstairs. Both of them looked up at the ceiling. Hermione's grip on Harry's arm now was so tight that he was losing feeling in his fingers. He raised her eyebrow at her and she nodded again. Let's go. Quietly as they could, they crept up the hall and up the cr crumbling staircase. Everything was covered with thick layer of dust except the floors, where the wide, shiny stripe had been made by someone being dragged upstairs. They reached the dark landing. Knox, they whispered together, and the lights at the end of their wounds went out. Only one door was open. As they crept towards it, they heard a movement from behind it, and low moan, and then a deep, loud pouring. They exchanged looks at last and nodded. Warned, held tight before, both, before him, Harry kicked the door wide open. On a magnificent four-poster bed with dusty hangings lay Crookshanks, purring loudly at the sight of them. On the floor beside them, clutching his leg, it was stuck out in a strange angle, was Ron. Hermione... Harry and Hermione dashed across the room. Ron, are you okay? Where's the dog? Not a dog, Ron moaned. His teeth were gritted with pain. Harry, it's a trap. What? He's the dog. He's Animagus. Ron, who was staring over in Harry's shoulder, Harry wheeled around with a snap. The man in the shadows closed the door behind them. A mass of filthy, matted hair hung to his elbows. If eyes hadn't been shining out of the deep, dark sockets, we might have been a corpse. The waxy skin was stretched so tightly over his bones and face, it looked as though it was a skull. His yellowish teeth were barred in a grin. It was serious back black. Espelliamus, he croaked, pointing at Ron's wand and at them. Harry and Hermione's wands were shot out of their hands, high in the air, and black caught them. Then he took a step closer. His eyes were fixed on Harry. I thought you'd come to help your friend, he said hoarsely. His words sounded as though he had long since lost the habit of using it. Your father would have done the same for me. Brave of you. Not to run for your teacher. I'm grateful. It will make everything much easier. The taunt about his father rang in Harry's ear as though Black had bellowed it. A boiling hate of hate erupted in Harry's chest, leaving no place for fear. For the first time in his life, he wanted his wand back in his hand, not to defend himself, but to attack, to kill. Without knowing what he was doing, he stared, started forward, but there was a sudden movement on either side of him, and two pairs of hands grabbed him and held him back. No, Harry, Hermione gasped in a petrified whisper. Ron, however, spoke to Black. If you want to kill Harry, you'll have to kill us too, he said fiercely, as though an effort of standing upright was draining him still of more color, and he swayed slightly as he spoke. Something flickered in Black's shadowy eyes. Lie down, he said quietly to Ron. You'll damage your leg even more. Did you hear me? Ron said weakly, though he was clinging painfully to Harry to stay upright. You'll have to kill all three of us. There'll be no more murder tonight, said Black, with a grin widen. Why's that? Harry spat, trying to wrench himself free of Ron and Hermione. Didn't care last time, did you? Didn't mind slaughtering all those muggles to get Pettigrew. What's the matter? Going soft in Azkaban? Harry, Hermione whimpered. Be quiet. He killed my mom and dad. Harry roared in with a huge effort and broke free of Hermione and Ron's restraints and lunged forward. He had forgotten about magic. He had forgotten that he was short and skinny and 13, whereas Black was tall, full-grown man. All Harry knew was that he wanted to hurt Black as badly as he could, and he didn't care how much he got hurt in, the pro in return. Perhaps it was the shock of Harry doing something so stupid, but Black didn't raise a wand at the, in time. One of, Harry's hand, one of Harry's hands flattened over his wasted wrist, forcing the wands to ripple tips away, and Knuckles and Harry on the other collided with the sides of Black's head, and he fell backward into the wall. Hermione was screaming, 
Ron was yelling, and there was a blinding flash in the wands in Black's hands sent a jaw of sparks into the air that missed Harry's face by inches. Harry felt the shrunk arm under his fingers twisting madly, but he clung it onto the other hand, punching every part of Black's it could find. But Black's free hand had found Harry's throat. No, he hissed. I've waited too long. His fingers tightened around Harry. Harry choked his glasses askew. Then he saw Hermione's foot swing out of nowhere. Black let go of Harry with a grunt of pain. Harry had thrown, Ron had thrown himself on Black's wound hand and Harry heard a faint clatter. He found, fought free the tangle of the bodies and he sat there with his own wand rolling across the floor and he threw himself towards it. But, ah, Crookshanks had joined in the fray.